and welcome to a great service plan just for you, all you mamas. Come on, give mamas one more little bit of love. Come on, y'all mamas. You probably already figured this out, but it's Mother's Day, all right? And there is nobody like your mama. I can tell you that right now for sure. I found these old pictures of me and my mom. You want to go old school? Look at this right here, son. That's what I'm talking about. Respect the mullet, cuz. Y'all think y'all know mullet now? Dude, that's mullet right there. So my mama, that goes a long way back. She loved me long hair, short hair, rock and roll. She didn't care. She loved, period. So we're very, very grateful for that, including when we started Simple Church. Look at this picture right here from the very first day days at Simple Church in the theater. And you see that little cup there? It's got the little, uh, I think it's got a bulletin in there. Right now, Mother's Day, you got more cups in those seats out there in the theater. Make sure you pick them up. Got a little snacks, but it's also got that golden ticket. So make sure you take it to Do Good Store if you got one, because we got a free prize for you. Can you give some love for Mama's free prizes? Come on. That's what I'm talking about. And then also I found this picture of my brother and her in the lobby. And this is what makes it so special on a day like today. We remember and we thank God for our mamas. And you probably already know this, but my dad passed away last year. My mom passed away a few years before that. And maybe I'm not the only one been there, done that, where you're a little bit hard today when you come in something like this today, because you're like, man, how am I going to get through all this? But I'm going to try to encourage you and I'm going to try to help you. But it also reminded me when we don't have our loved ones with us. It reminded me of this old song. Anybody like rock and roll in here? I need to know who the rock and roll people are. Come on. All right, I'm going to take you all the way back. All right, this is for all of my old school rock and roll people. This song is my heart today because Cinderella says it best. We'll take a listen. Some of you are in shock. You're like, is that Cinderella on Mother's Day? Listen, you got to know the words, man. Don't know what you got till it's gone. That is why we want to appreciate you today. Because like I said, it's too late for me and my brother to be able to lay our arms around her and give her a little thank you today because she's with Jesus now. We're super grateful for that. But we miss her every day. And that's why I need mamas. Can anybody be my mama today? Come on, where are my mamas in here? Y'all try to love on us that don't have our mamas because it's not easy. But we don't want to miss this opportunity. Now, I still have my mother-in-law, thank God, and my beautiful wife, mother of my kids. Come on, give them some love too. Come on, yes. Love you, Angie. Love you, Mimi. And I want to make sure we appreciate them the way they deserve it because they don't always feel that way. And that's what we're going to talk about very shortly because I'm probably not the only one. You don't always treat your moms or your mother-in-laws the way you should because it seems like moms get on our nerves. Like when you're growing up, you're like, mom, mom, you always have these different things going on. So I found a little comedian to lighten it up a little bit and give us some lessons today. And this is a lesson of what you're not supposed to do. All right. If you got your mama here, don't act like this. Roll that clip. I have no shorter fuse with anyone in my life than I do my own mother. <laughs> my mom could be like, I'm forwarding you an article <laughs> about the LA Art Deco movement. And I'm like, why would you do that? Deco is like my least favorite architectural movement. <laughs> Meanwhile, dads get off scot-free. I remember my dad would call me on the phone and be like, hey son, wanted to come to your baseball game today, but then didn't. <laughs> and I'm like, that's okay, daddy. <laughs> My mom's like, I like that jacket on you. I'm like, what about all my other jackets? <laughs> What's wrong with them, huh? Come on, y'all, come on, right? Here is the obvious statement I'd like to make after that video. We often underappreciate the ones we love. That's why Mother's Day is a big deal today because I'm probably not the only one. They 
we don't always treat them right. And I'm looking in this audience and I see some of you and I know your relationship with your moms. We're all guilty of it, right? Have you ever treated someone uncare, you know, unkind or you're like, ah, I probably need to be better at this? Well, this is why today's message I think will help you, all right? If you've ever felt unappreciated, undervalued or unseen, that could be at home or at work, today's message is for you. So even though you may not be a mom yet, you may need to take these notes down because this message applies to all of us, but specifically I'm talking to you today, mom, all right? It can be very discouraging when others do not notice what you're doing or say thank you for what has been done. Now, as we're in this series called Been There, Done That, we've all been there and done that. And Jesus understands that and he gets us. And this is why this story is really, really cool. You'll learn something and it'll apply to where we're going. Luke 17 as Jesus entered a village, there were 10 men that had leprosy. So they stood there and they were hollering out a distance, hey, Jesus, have mercy on us, help us, all right? It's kind of like when you holler for your mom in the other room. You're keeping your distance. You're like, mom, I need some help, all right? Because moms are amazing. They always come through, man. They do so much for so many of us. And we have some amazing moms here in the Simple Church. And I pulled a picture because here's Christy and Emily and Jessica. Jessica was singing a little bit a while ago. And Christy's feeling a little under the weather. Christy, we love you, praying for you as well. But these women, when I tell you they do it all, not only does Christy help with the books, she also sings and you see all the different things they do in their families, but they're amazing because this week they went to a nursing home and they sang for all of the moms in the nursing home. Give them some love for doing that. Come on, y'all. Awesome. And these are just three awesome mamas. So what I think about when I look at these ladies and all the wonderful moms in my life from Angie to Mimi, they're the providers many times. They cook, they clean, they are Uber drivers. Anybody know what an Uber driver is? You know mamas handle all of that. They can be the counselor, the doctor. They can be a life coach, a personal shopper. Angie, we had graduation this week and Angie's out personally shopping for Emma, getting all these different things and prom was coming up. She brought all these dresses, lined them up like it was a private showing in our bathroom. Like, what do you like this one? Do you like that one? Amazing mom at that. They also can be the referee. I have three kids. Moms are great referees. They break us up from our fights. Me and my brother, no record of that, but probably a little bit. And then also they can be a defense attorney. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Judge. And then my mom was the executioner. Can I get an amen? All right. Because sometimes they just got to lay down the law. It wasn't my dad. It was my mom that was very, very strong in our life. And she was the spiritual leader and the disciplinarian. She was an amazing woman. Wouldn't be here without her. And they handle all of the business inside the home and outside the home many times. And when you're doing all of those things, there are times when you just don't feel appreciated. You know, you're like, man, I can't believe that no one recognized all that I have done or all that I've accomplished. And if you feel that way, you're not alone, mom. And this Bible story will give us another example of that. As it continues, Luke 17, Jesus is telling us the rest of the story. It says he looks out and he sees them and he says, hey, you're the guys with leprosy. Go to the priest. And when you go to the priest, you're going to be cleansed. Well, they started walking and on their way to see the priest, they were cleansed right there on the spot. Now, since Easter, I've been telling you three things. If you're a parent in here, please remember these things. Teach your kids now. Don't matter how old they are. I've got 20-year-olds now, and I'm telling them, remember these three things. God loves you, you can trust him, and you should obey him. This is just one example of they obey Jesus. They're like, hey, Jesus. And in their obedience, man, they were healed right there on the spot. And a crazy, cool miracle. Didn't even have to get to the priest, man. Just by being obedient, they were healed on the spot. Now, you go, well, that's a cool story, but what are we talking about? Remember, it's appreciation. So the story continues, and there were 10 of them that had leprosy. Well, the story says that one of them, when he had saw that he was healed, when he recognized what God had done, he came back to Jesus, fell on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he has done. And this man was a Samaritan. You go, well, why would they point that out? Well, because in the Jewish culture... The Samaritans were the hated group of people. Jesus was amazed. The story is being told to us. He's amazed because nine other guys go on about their business and never say thank you. The only one that says thank you is the outcast, the misfit, the one who's a Samaritan that no one likes. And here he is coming back and falling at Jesus' feet and saying, hey man, I want to say thank you. Now you go, well, what's the point of this story? Well, I have a feeling you relate to what Jesus says right here in verse 17, because Jesus is very grateful that the guy comes at his feet, but he asked the question that we all asked, didn't I heal 10 people? Like, where are the other nine in this? Now, what I love is that you see this side of Jesus. 
He's recognizing that you don't always feel appreciated. Moms, does that sound familiar? You know, don't you say the same kind of thing? Didn't I cook the meal? I mean, I've cooked your favorite meal and nobody said anything. Or didn't I fill out the FAFSA? Now, if y'all know what that is, if you're a young person, I'm going to tell you right now, that's, I'm thanking God for Angie right now. Because when you go online to get scholarships in college, it's crazy. But a mama goes in there and does it. She handles it. A guy's like, I don't know. Dad's like, I don't know how to do all that. Now you got cooking meals, fast food, taking care of scholarships and everything else, washing clothes, piles and piles of clothes. And then many of you, as I said before, moms are the provider, man. There's a single mom out there. And you're like, man, I've not only done all that, I also bought you your first car. I have your car note. I paid your insurance, your gas, your repairs. All this stuff's going on. And in the process, does anybody stop and say thank you? You kind of feel like Jesus, like, hey, where are they? Where are the people to say thank you in this? And I think you can relate to this statement because I know I can. It stings when you're not appreciated. So if you've done everything for everybody and nobody goes, hey, man, like, I really appreciate that. It can be difficult on all of us, but particularly for moms. And Jesus noticed this. He's saying, man, where are they? You could have at least paused for a couple of minutes and said, thank you for what's going on. But we haven't. And many times we've been there and done that as well. So if you're in that category and you learn and can relate to that story, you learn a little bit something and you can relate to it, I'm going to give you three quick things to get you in and out of here to help you if you feel undervalued or underappreciated. Number one, please remember this. Remember the notes are online. You can download them. You can look at them later. It always helps because if it doesn't apply right now, it might apply this next week or this next month. But number one, if you feel underappreciated, how those people make you feel is not who you are. So leave that up there just for a second. Let's just say it's work. Say you're working hard and no one's recognizing how hard you've worked. Say you're a mom and you're at home and nobody in the family's recognizing. It doesn't matter if you're male, female, whatever's going on. There are times when how they make you feel is not who you are. It's kind of like, man, I'm looking for some encouragement and I'm not getting any. Now, Jesus gives us a couple examples, and this is going back to Luke chapter 4. It's pretty interesting because Jesus is even in the same boat as me and you. There's times when people recognize you and go, man, that was awesome. Luke 4, uh, 4 15. It says, Jesus was teaching in the synagogues and everyone praised him. There's sometimes, man, you get up to do your job and everybody's like, man, I love it. They could be mama. You did a great job, mom. That meal was great. Or thank you for this and that and the other. Sometimes you get praise. But just a few verses down in the same chapter, are you ready for this? All right, check it out, Luke 4, 28. And then all the people of the synagogue were furious with him when they heard him speaking. And they got up and drove him out of town. And guess what? Tried to throw him off a cliff. There are some times that your family is not very appreciative or your boss may be trying to fire you. And you're going, man, I was trying to do the right job. And why did they turn on me so quickly? Sometimes your kids, man, I love you, mom. The next one, I hate you, bye-bye. You go back and forth from clapping to canceled, just like that. From man, you are the man to kill the man. That's what you see in that passage. And then you go, well, what would you bring that up for, Justin? Because just like Jesus experienced it, sometimes we do. And remember this next point, write it down again, get your phone out, take a picture, do what you got to do. Often we tie someone else's reaction to our identity. So, for example, if they don't treat you right, they don't say the right thing, well, then you feel like you're not good enough. Well, they didn't say anything about it. I must not have worked hard enough or I must not have done it right. I'm horrible. I'm not a great mom. I'm not a great worker, whatever it is. I'm like, no, man. Remember this. Someone's inability to see your worth doesn't decrease your value. Someone doesn't recognize it. It doesn't make you not valuable. Please teach our kids this. I try to tell my kids this. You want them to learn this. It's like, if no one else recognizes it, you got to know and be satisfied with how hard you're working and knowing whether the boss recognizes it or not. It doesn't decrease your value. And then moms and dads, we have to model the same thing. Here's another great point. You ready? Your value isn't determined by what others think of you. They're not. It's not determined by that, but by who God says you are. Now, you go, well, what does this mean, Justin? Last few weeks, I've been giving you handouts, all right? Free downloads, things that you can either teach your kids with or you know, remind them, uh, maybe even for yourself, put it on your dashboard. Or well, here's a great reminder. This is who God says you are. Here's the download. And when you look at this list of all these scriptures, 
It doesn't matter whether someone else sees it or values you the way you think you should, because trust me, we all mess this up. Sometimes it's with our moms, sometimes it's with our friends, sometimes it's with our employees. We don't show you enough value, but it doesn't mean you're not valuable because God reminds you of who you are and your value and your worth is not based on what I say or a boss says or a husband or kids say. Your value is determined by God and God alone. And look at that great list. Now that's a handout you can print and put on your desk, put on your you know, dashboard or hand to your kids. So when they're wondering like, he didn't like me or I didn't make the team, that doesn't mean you're not valuable. It means that God has who he says he is and he loves you just like you are. And he is working through even the tough times in your life to make you exactly who you're supposed to be. Sometimes that's hard to see. That's why that handout's available for you. Go download it and share it with your family. Number two. Those you serve the most often appreciate you the least. Can I get an amen? I didn't hear any amens, but that's all right. Thank you. Now, let me explain that. Sometimes it's in your workplace. So you're always helping the teacher next to you. You're always helping the coworker next to you. And because you're always helping them, they don't really show appreciation. I'm just as guilty as a boss as other bosses in here. I'm just as guilty as a husband, as a dad, as a friend. We're all guilty of it. And this is why we are guilty of it. Please remember this. It doesn't diminish your value. This is why we're guilty of it. Because what is normal isn't celebrated. It becomes expected. Now, I wish it wasn't this way, but I experience it just like you do. So, for example, when I say what's normal, when you do your job well, it's, it's not always celebrated. It's just kind of like, hey, man, you did your job well. So, for example, mom, you clean the house, and it's, uh, you know that you're going to do it well, but everybody's so used to the house being clean, they're just like, cool, house is clean. Or you do this great meal, and you've you know, knocked it out of the park. You got it all prepared, and they come in, and they eat it, and they walk away, and you go, did no one notice how awesome this meal is? And nobody says anything. The clothes are washed, and they're folded, and they're put up. Scholarships are done, whatever it is. And this is the thing that I'm learning and I want to teach you and I'm not great at, I want to be better at, but this is where it's all coming real. Moms, dads, friends, coworkers, bosses, we all get it. How do you know you're good at something? You ready? Write this down. I'm going to put it on the screen for you. You know you're good when you stop getting compliments. (laughs) Now you go, Justin, that's kind of jacked up. It's just the way it is though. Me personally, when I first started doing sermons, okay, now you got to remember, I got 52 a year plus other little speaking engagements. So you would put your heart into it. You'd prepare. You would go in there and study and you'd pray and you'd get all the notes. You'd put it all together. When I first started, I'd come out and everybody'd go, oh my God, it was so awesome. It just touched my heart. Oh my God. My, my. 52 messages later and 17 years later, people are like, is I right. use about a C, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like going, what? We were joking. I came out of the service a minute ago. Someone was like, I was about 80. You know, we were, they're all joking, but it's like once you're doing it and it's always being done, then sometimes people just don't appreciate it. They don't really necessarily recognize it. And that's okay. It's not, it can't happen all the time. It's not reality, all right? We've all been there and done that. And just because someone doesn't notice it right now, does it mean that they won't notice it later? So mom, you're knocking it out of the park. You're taking care of your kids, your husband, you're taking care of the house. And just because they don't notice it right now, doesn't mean that there will be some day down the line that they go, man, you were awesome. Because I'm telling you, my mom's been gone for years now. And I recognize just how beautiful and wonderful and sacrificial she was And sure, I wish I could tell her now. And that's why this message is important. While you got your mom, while you got your friends, you got your loved ones, tell them while you can. Because it won't be long, man. And you never know, man. They either may go to college, because I got three going to college, or they might be going home. And you go, man, I missed the opportunity to tell them that. Now, when I say they're going to college, I'm gonna make you cry a little bit, all right? Get your tissues ready. Because when I grew up, our kids love watching Toy Story. Any Toy Story lovers in here? I remember, yep, four or five. I couldn't hear all y'all. Come on, Toy Story lovers. You gotta love Toy Story. Well, but there was one little you know, part that tore our hearts out now. When we were younger and our kids were younger, not so much. But when I got three going to college, this is the little clip. When I tell you that you appreciate it more when they're gone, this is the moment. Watch what happens in this little episode right here. Even Woody gets it, watch. 
say goodbye to Molly? <laughs> Mom, we've said goodbye like 10 times. Mom, it's okay. I know. It's just... I wish I could always be with you. You will be, Mom. All right, I'm already crying because I'm looking out here and people are crying, all right? So I'm trying to pull it together because I get it. We're loading up Ian. We're loading up Emma. Hannah's already gone and you're going, oh my gosh. And then our kids, hopefully, look back and go, man, we really had it pretty good. And I appreciate what you've done, mom or dad. And I know it's not easy, but even in that movie, why it gets all of us is because you're going like, it's important. These relationships are important. And you don't want to miss it when you have it right in front of you. Now, I gave you the Cinderella illustration. You don't know what it's got, you know what you've got until it's gone. It can also relate to work is because when you get time off and you get changed jobs, like we worked hard in the Simple Church to try to fix some things that we didn't like growing up. And when people would leave our church and go work somewhere else, they'd always look back and go like, man, I miss the flexibility. Man, I miss those Christmas bonuses. We didn't get those in our company. But the thing they miss probably more than anything else is there's a very generous couple in our church that gives us a retreat uh, for the staff members and their wives. And we've had all these great memories together. And somebody's like, man, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Appreciate what you have and thank God that you had these moments together. So whether it's vacation with your family, you know, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be, meals, Mother's Day today, don't rush through it. Relax and enjoy the moments that you have. Because Philippians teaches, I thank God every time I remember you. This is what today is about. I thank God for the memories, the relationships, the moments that we have together. Don't rush through them. Seize them and know that God is with you in the midst of those things. Number three, you ready for this? Please remember it, what's unseen by people is often what's most significant to God. Now, let me explain this. We as people, we celebrate what is seen. It's just the way we are. Somebody gets a job promotion, man, you'll send them a text, you give them a attaboy, man, great job, buy a new house, congratulations on the new house. Or in my case, it's graduation. So when we send out these little cards right here, we didn't send them out to anybody right now because I wanted to spare you trying to get to the graduation because traffic was horrific, all right? So the good news is she's already graduated, but if you're looking at that picture right now, I want you to send money to 2950 East Lake. No, I'm just kidding, all right? Everybody knows you send that out going, hey, man, send me some money. So Rick, thanks for coming up. Right before I walked in, Rick goes, I didn't even know. Here's some money. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Why do we do this? Because what is seen is celebrated. Matter of fact, this is kind of a crazy cool story. Uh, Chip sends me this this morning. He goes, hey, did you see Emma's in the Times? Even the Shreveport Times. This was a picture of the Shreveport Times and Emma's on the front. I'm like, how cool is that? Because all of our friends and family go, oh, it's so cool. Congratulations. Because we love to celebrate what is seen. But what I want my kids to know, as proud as I am of Emma, she's an amazing young lady. All of my kids are amazing. Hannah singing, like, because she sang today, they'll be like, oh, I saw Ian singing. I mean, Ian playing bass and Hannah singing. And I'm like, oh, because we celebrate what's seen. But I also want them to remember this point. It is what is unseen that is significant to God. Being seen is cool. Being on the screen, everybody, oh, great sermon, great sermon. But what's more important is what happens behind the scenes, in your home, in the quiet, when no one's watching. Because what's invisible is often what is most valuable. See, it's those qualities that you're teaching your kids. It's those moments where you're going, hey, listen, everybody may applaud you in one minute, but they can also hate you the next. Remember Jesus' story? So what I'm telling you is, is be genuine. <laughs> Be the kind of person that really does represent what's happening in private is something that you're proud of when it comes out into the public. Matthew 6, 4 says it like this, your father can see what is done in private and he will reward you. So moms, although there may not be an award of the world's greatest mom today, 
Your father says, I promise you, I'll reward you for all that hard work. So if you're working in a company, you're working at the church, you're working in behind the scenes, volunteering, whatever it may be, and you go, man, I don't even think they recognize what's going on. I promise you, we're not great at it, and I'm sorry that we don't do it enough because it's just like with our families. You don't know what it's got until it's, it's gone, and you also don't appreciate like you should. We all got to get better at that. But what I can encourage you in is that God sees it. He promises that he is going to reward you for what you're, what you're doing and what you continue to do. Hebrews 6.10 even says it like this, God is fair. Men, sometimes we try to be fair, but we're not always fair, but God is fair. And he will remember all the work you've done. He will remember that you showed your love to help those people, right? All those people around you and to continue to help them. This is really what it's all about. When you're trying to evaluate your life, you're trying to raise kids, you're trying to raise your family, you're trying to celebrate a mom or a dad, it comes back to, are you living the way that God called us to? Are we teaching our kids to do that? Are we worried about social media posts? Are we worried about what everybody sees? Or are we trying to teach them that, hey, man, God sees you and he sees everything that you're doing work as if you're working for the Lord. Whether everybody sees it, recognizes it, gives you a word or not, man, you honor God with what you do in your life. And the truth is, Moms, you've demonstrated that for us because you don't get enough thank yous. You don't get enough appreciation. But what you do is, is you just keep on working. You keep on serving. You keep on saying, I'm here to do whatever I can to make this environment better, whether it's your home or your workplace. And I am forever grateful for every one of you that do that for us and that do that for your families because it's a great example for the world to see. And moms, we don't always remember to say thanks. We don't always remember to say the things that we need to say. So what I decided to do was put a video together for you. And this video is what people wish they could say. It's what they wish they could communicate in a clear way. And I hope that as you watch this, you'd realize it's a little bit of love sent to you on this Mother's Day. You might laugh a little as well. Check it out. When I move out one day, my mom will be very sad. I feel my mom's love in my heart, like, it's right here. I, I'm feeling it right, right now. Sometimes I love her, sometimes I don't. But when I'm angry, I don't. My mom is everything to me. She just is this ray of energy and sunlight and positivity. The thing that I wish I could have done more of is thanking her. Didn't matter what shape I was in, I could always come home to mom. My mom was basically the glue that held me together. When I left the Philippines, I knew that my son will be in good hands because I know my mom will take care of him. My mom is kind of smart, you know? Dad's smart. If I would say like one to ten, it would be a five. Maybe my poor dad got the raw end of the deal, but I do remember my mother saying to him when there was an argument about something I'd done, she says, you don't want to hurt her spirit. I remember that. My mom was diagnosed with uh, a really rare disease about 12 hours before she died. So we didn't get a lot of time to, to talk or to say goodbye, but she did get to say that she loved me, which were her last words. Uh, and I cherish that. Because I have I've been able to hang on to it. I'm probably gonna say to my mom, you're a wonderful person. my mentor. I tie a invisible string to my heart and she ties the same one to her heart and it's always attached together. My mother, she struggled a lot with addiction. Sorry, I'm getting upset. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. You know, you have partners, you have friends, you have kids, um, but there is nobody else who um, who will ever care about you as much. My son now always tells me, I love you, Mama. But for 48 years, you realize I didn't say I love you to my mom. I can think of three words. I forgive you. You were a good mom. You did really good. And thank you, Mom. I love you, Mom. Hey, Chelsea, if Mom's got paid, 
how much do you think they should get paid in a year for being a mom? Maybe a hundred dollars. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Give them a little love. I tell you what, I wish I could give every mom in $100, and I know all of you are like, me too, all right? <laughs> but what I will tell you is you're worth way more than this. I wish I could say to my mom how thankful I am for all that she did for me and my brother. I wish that I could clearly communicate to my beautiful wife what an awesome mom she is, because I don't always do it like I should. And to my mother-in-law, I don't always tell her how thankful I am for the gifts that she's given me and my beautiful wife. And then all of my family is impacted by these beautiful ladies. And then I think about all of you who've been a mom to me. There's so many of you in the Simple Church over the years. You're just really, you loved me and you've taken care of me and supported me, whether my mom was here or not. And I'm just super grateful for that. And I want to just tell all of you, thank you. And I pray that each one of you would not miss this opportunity today. When you walk out of here, if you don't have your mom in town, call her, please. No matter what, if even it's like this video, say, Mom, I love you and just wanted you to know. If you have them, make sure you enjoy the meal and don't rush through it. Make sure that we seize the moments we have because they really are special. There's nothing quite like your mom. There's nobody like your mom. And today's Mother's Day is our chance to say thank you for that. So I'm going to pray for you and try to get you out of here so you can beat the Methodist. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for each and every person, Lord, that they got here today, that they're watching online, that they would know what it means to us that we could get to share Mother's Day together. Lord, what a lot of moms have prayed, just like my mom did, is that our family would be with us in heaven one day. And if there's someone here that has never given their life to you, Lord, I pray that today would be their day so that they could see their mom again. I know I'll see my mom. I know she's with you. I know that relationship with you is what gets her there. And I don't want anybody to miss that reunion. So Lord, if someone's never given their life to you, I pray today they would. Jesus, come into my life, change me, forgive me. I believe in you and I put my hope and my faith and my trust in you. And I wanna be reunited with my family. And I wanna be with you, Jesus. And I know you'll hear them and you'll help them. And as we walk out of here, Lord, I pray that we would seize the moments that we have. We're, none of us know what tomorrow brings, but what we do know is we have right now. So help us to seize it, to enjoy it, to celebrate and love those around us. And thank you so much for the gift of moms. And I thank you for all of the women in my life who've loved me and supported and encouraged me. And I ask you to bless them all in return. We love you and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Can